There's a party happening, and you're invited. Woo! You ready? Ready to get your grooves on? Yeah? You're okay, good. I got one person coming. Nice, nice. I'm excited for this. Now, uh, you know, the month of June for me is kind of like a, a month of parties. First off, that's normally when I go on vacation. That's kind of like one big party, especially when you got five kids, a wife, and a dog. That's a party. <laughs> then, of course, it's my lovely wife's birthday in July, and so we party to celebrate her and her life here on this world, which has become part of my life, thankfully. And, of course, we also have our anniversary in July as well. So uh, we have lots of parties in July, and it's tons of fun. It reminds me of this incredible party that I was able to participate in a number of years ago. Um, but before we do that, let's just say a big hello to our fellow campuses. We've got North End Campus. Thank you very much. Come on. Show some love. Show some love. We got our Neverville campus, Bronx Park campus, and of course, our friends up in Morris. And, oh yeah, oh yeah. We also have our online friends. Thank you so much for joining us online. So this party that I was able to participate in was actually my friend's bachelor party. And it, it wasn't like crazy, like movie uh, style um, bachelor party, if you know what I mean. But uh, my friend from high school, he was getting married, uh, but he wanted to celebrate that fact that a woman actually chose to love him. So uh, he was a high school buddy here in Manitoba, but he had moved out to British Columbia. So he told me and like seven other guys, hey, why don't you come out to British Columbia and we'll spend like a week celebrating this fact that I'm going to get married. Of course, we all said yes. We jumped into a van and drove halfway across the country. And it was an incredible time. We camped in the mountains. We swam in the river. We did some cliff jumping. We did all sorts of amazing things. We did a hot springs. You know, like there's that one near Nelson with the caves. You can go inside the caves in the hot springs, that's super fun. But the one most memorable part of this week-long party was when we decided to go lazy river tubing. And it was supposed to be lazy, it was supposed to be relaxing, uh, but it didn't turn out like that at all. You see, uh, we actually got into the Slocan River where we were supposed to get out. And as a result, we ended up going through some rapids that were way more intense than we should have had done with our dollar store tubes. If you've never been whitewater rafting, it kind of looks like this. Uh, this isn't exactly the river we went on, but it did look like that. Now, those people in the picture, they have helmets, they have life vests, they have paddles, and a real bona fide raft to be in. Uh, if you can picture us, we had well, none of those things. Uh, we had dollar store tubes, and that's it. We actually tied some of them together because, hey, if you're going down the river, you want to be together with your friends, right? So we got to this one place in the river. The rapids were so intense, uh, people were starting to fear for their lives, actually. And there was a huge rock right up in the middle of this river, splitting the water on the left and the right. And our two tubes, one got stuck on the right and one got stuck on the left, and we had no idea what to do. The water was just pushing them so, so hard on either side, we could hardly pull it out. I, I really do think that it was God with us in that moment because it was really dangerous and we shouldn't have been there, but we were able to get the tubes out and actually get to the shoreline and walk downstream a little bit. But of course, in classic uh, bachelor guy's fashion, we got back in the river to continue on. <laughs> so that was incredibly memorable for me, obviously, and it was a party uh, that was not like any other party I have been a part of. And here's the thing, you and I are even invited to a better party than that, a longer party, party a bigger party. It's even better than anything this world has to offer. You know, our world seems to think they've got parties cornered. They think they know how to party, right? And we don't 
have to get too imaginative with understanding what the world's party looks like, right? Usually there's uh, alcohol, maybe some recreational drugs, maybe uh, some dancing, and that leads to other things, right? And the world thinks they've got this whole thing of partying under wraps. But here's a verse in Psalm 4, verse 7, which really turns this on its head. It says, you, this is David speaking to God, you have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. There's this thing about the joy of the Lord that is greater than any party that the world has to offer. If you think about grains, you know, cakes and donuts and sweets and, and all those sorts of things. Wine, about alcoholic drinks and all that stuff. The things that the world sees as, as absolutely important for every single party they have, the joy of the Lord just tops all of it. And that's the party that you and I are invited to. It's about the joy of the Lord. There's, there's so much joy joy in this party because we get to celebrate God's grace and mercy. Right? Right? Yeah, we can celebrate that. We can celebrate that. A pastor from the West Coast put it this way, the best parties celebrate God, the grace and mercy of God that restores those who don't deserve it. How many of you have been restored by God's grace and mercy? Yeah? Mm-hmm. How many of you actually didn't deserve that? Okay, we all got reason to celebrate, hey? We all got reason to celebrate. That should put a smile on your face. You know, this Sunday morning is actually part of that party. We celebrate on Sunday mornings the things that God has done in our lives, but it's not just this Sunday morning celebration. It's also salvation celebration. Uh, in Luke 15, Jesus talks three different stories about how there are uh, a lost sheep, there is a lost coin, and there is a lost son. You probably know that parable as the prodigal son. But in each circumstance, when the lost thing is found, there is a great big party. And Jesus says that it is like this in heaven when even one soul finds salvation, right? Right? So we party because of salvation for other people and for ourselves. There's another party that comes up in Scripture too. In Revelation 19.9, it talks about the wedding feast of the Lamb. This is the banquet that lasts forever. This is the feast, the party, the celebration that lasts for on and on and on without end, celebrating the love and the, the joy, the grace and the mercy of our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is such a blessing to, to celebrate, right? It's such a blessing to, to know that we can party because of God's grace and mercy, right? It absolutely is. In Luke chapter 14, Jesus is at a banquet with people that are actually opposing him. Somehow the Pharisees decided it was a good idea to invite uh, Jesus, kind of their sworn enemy at this point, to a banquet. And so he graciously accepts that invitation and he is out there um, eating their food, drinking their, they probably had some wine of some type, and uh, they were uh, talking about what it would look like in heaven. And you know in family gatherings when there's all of a sudden like a tense, uh, a tense um, conversation and then there's that one person who's like ready to change the subject, right? The one person who's like, oh, it's just so good that you all came out here today, right? <laughs> Trying to ignore all that, that tense stuff that just happened. Well, in, in uh, Luke 14, verse 15, there's a nameless character that kind of does that. Things got awkward. Jesus was, you know, poking at the Pharisees. And this guy says, oh, what a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Oh, what a blessing it will be to attend a blanket, banquet, <laughs> banquet in the kingdom of God. You know, Jesus hears that, and he doesn't correct him. He doesn't um, disagree with this statement. It absolutely is a blessing to participate in the party, in the celebration of the kingdom of God. But what Jesus does is that he clarifies who is going to be in attendance. 
And so he tells this story about uh, how there are uh, a a number of uh, people that have been invited to a party. A master had had brought together all this food, got a venue, and was ready to celebrate. And when he told his servant, go bring those people that were previously invited, they all had excuses not to come. One person bought a new field. One person had a new team of oxen. And one person recently got married. It kind of feels like one of those doesn't quite fit the the system, but anyways, they are not coming because they have better things to do. And so the servant goes back to the master and says, hey, all these people, they've said they're not coming. What should we do? This food is warm. The drinks are poured. The the table is setting. What are we going to do? And the master says, okay, go out into the city and see who's available. Bring, bring the poor, the blind, the beggars, bring them in and get them a seat at the, t- at the table. And so the servant goes out and brings them in. And there's even more room in, in this banquet, even more space. And so the master says, okay, go beyond the boundaries of this city. Go out to the highways, go out to the hedges along the fields and, and just find anyone you can find. Bring them in to this party. And the reason he gives is so that my house may be full. Keep that in mind as we go. But here's the thing. Who are the kinds of people, Jesus says, that will be attending the banquet? Not the people who think they've got it all together, but simply put, the people who will enjoy the party that God invites us to are those who recognize our need for his grace and mercy and receive it. So what do we do here on Sunday mornings? Well, first off, we celebrate God's grace and mercy, but we also put an invitation forward to those that maybe never experienced that grace and mercy. It's called the salvation invitation. We'll we'll get there at the end of the sermon today, all right? So we put that invitation out here in this room, but it doesn't just end there. We celebrate because it has restored us. God's grace and mercy has restored us. It is restoring us. And it has the power to restore others. We believe that, right? That's reason to celebrate. Not just restores us, but power to restore others. And I want to celebrate that. And I think you want to celebrate that too, right? Come on, lift it up. It's... The power of God's grace and mercy is not just for you, but it's also for every single person you know. Every single person in your family, at work, along your your street, your neighborhood, every single person, the power of God in his grace and mercy is enough for all of us, right? That's reason to celebrate. I, I don't want the people that I know, people that are invited, but maybe they don't even know they're invited to this party, I want them to know that there's space for them here. And I'm pretty sure that you want to see others join in this party too, right? Right? You want to see your neighbors join this party, not just Sunday mornings, but ultimately the eternal party. You want to see your family members join this party, right? Right? Good, good. You're tracking with me because where we're about to go you have to be on board with this part, right? You want to see your coworkers turning to Christ and receiving that invitation, right? Absolutely. So here's what you need to know then. It's not just that you are invited to the party, but we need to invite others along with us. The main point that I want you to take today is that we must invite others along to the party with us. We are that servant. Jesus is our master, and we are called to invite others along to this party on Sunday mornings, but ultimately the eternal party as well. You know, when, uh, before Anna and I were engaged, uh, she was living in Michigan, that's where she grew up, and she was planning to move to Calgary. And I happened to be in Winnipeg, exactly halfway between the two. So I wasn't exactly, uh, you know, getting a better deal out of one option or the other. She was either going to be a thousand miles away in Michigan or a thousand miles away in Calgary, and I'm still stuck in the middle. So one August, she decided she was going to make that move from Michigan to Calgary. And 
She was so nice, she stopped here in Winnipeg to say hello and then skedaddle on. But what happened is that weekend that she was here in Winnipeg, I had been invited to a friend's wedding. And on the invitation, it said, Andrew Campbell plus one. Who knows what a plus one is? <laughs> it's a nameless person that can also come to the celebration, as long as they go with you, right? I'm like, yes, I can bring my girlfriend along to this, to this wedding, to this celebration. She doesn't have to know anyone there because she's my plus one, right? Because of that event, she never left Winnipeg ever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what you need to know about that story is that you have a plus one for this event. You have a plus one, and when they come, there's a good chance they're never going to leave. Right? right? I hope you're getting excited about this. I am. Okay. All right. So we got a plus one. That's exactly what Jesus is talking about in Luke 14, verse 23, right at the end of that parable. He tells his servant, go out, go out and find these people in the city, around the city, highways, hedges, compel people to come in, invite them so that my house may be filled. Now, look around you. Do you see any empty chairs? Yeah, online people. You see an empty chair in your room? Maybe, probably. There are empty chairs in this room, and Jesus is, in, is asking you, bring someone in, fill that chair. And just so you know, if we fill all the chairs here in the first service, there's more chairs in the second service. <laughs> all right, so bring people in. There, you have a plus one, and it's an open invitation to anyone to come and stay for the rest of their life. So who's your plus one? I hope you're thinking of someone by name. I hope you're thinking of someone in your mind's eye. Who is that person? Who is that person you are going to invite here to church? But it's not just about church, right? It's about that eternal perspective, about their salvation, about God's grace and mercy that is so worthy of celebrating. But I don't want to leave you just with that instruction to go and invite people. I want to give you a few pieces to hold on to that's going to help you do that, okay? So a bit of a practical piece, a few practical pieces as we move on here. How do we invite people to the party? How do we get them a little bit excited about the party when they've never been here before? Okay, so what's your favorite restaurant? Come on, shout it out. Your favorite restaurant? What? The keg. the keg. Just so happens I was there recently for my anniversary with a gift card. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm glad you said that. Recent experience for me, this steak was amazing. It was good, right? So think about this. How would you tell a friend, how would you convince them to go to the keg? How would you convince them to go to your favorite restaurant, right? I, I've broken it down into three very logical steps that I hope you grab onto, and we're gonna connect it into how you invite people to church, how you invite people to hear about Jesus, and hopefully find that salvation in him as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is describe the flavor. That's the first thing, I'm gonna describe the flavor. You know, that, that steak at the cake was just perfectly seasoned. It was like melt on your mouth, it was so good. You should all try it, right? Okay, but how does that relate to telling people to come to church, to celebrate, to hear about Jesus? Well, tell them what you have experienced. What have you experienced by God? What has he done in your life? You know the blessed lifestyle thing that we've made a, a permanent campaign here at Church of the Rock? This is kind of that last S, share your story. A small piece of that. Talk about how God has been active in your life. What has he actually done for you? There's a quote that's often attributed to Albert Einstein, and it says that coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. That is a complete shame. Why is God anonymous? 
right? I don't want God to be anonymous. I don't think he wants to be anonymous. So we've got to take the coincidences in our life, those small things that may not seem big, turn them from coincidences to God incidences. All right? We've got to talk about these things like God is active in our lives because he definitely is. And we need to see that and share the story of that. Just the other day, our pop-up tent trailer was having difficulty popping up and being a tent trailer. And so I was really, really regretting digging into the issue and and hopefully it would not be too bad of a fix. So before I even touched the thing, I said a very quick little prayer, Lord, help this trailer to be healed in Jesus' name. And, And if you don't wanna heal it, just make it a really simple fix. Well. Amazing, God did something because when I opened it up, when I started looking in, 30 minutes, solution fixed. Amazing. I couldn't have asked for anything better. Well, I guess maybe I, I did a complete healing. But you know what I mean. God incidents. He was the one who led the way. I prayed and he did something. He made it a quick fix. Now, if you look in your life, there might be things where it's like, well, isn't that just like a coincidence that that happened? No, it's God incidents. And you can talk about things like that to people around you in ways that actually give God the honor, give God the glory in those moments. Seemingly simple things. But when you allow God to be part of that, then you're describing the flavor to help other people get an idea of what it is to be so excited about. So here's your action step for this point. At your next meal... Whoever you're eating with, maybe they're believers, maybe they're not, I just, I want you to practice talking about how God has intervened in your life this past week. Just practice talking about how God is actually moving in your life. It doesn't have to be a big conversion story. We, we love, when we talk about testimonies in the church, usually we talk about that conversion story. But God is active in our lives day in and day out. And we need to recognize that and actually talk like he is, Right? All right, who is going to take on that action step? At least a third of you, okay? All right, because we got two more action steps coming up. The second point of how I would uh, convince you to go to the keg is uh, I would give you a taste. You know, most of the times at a restaurant, uh, it's more food than I should eat. But I do it anyways. If I was smart, I probably would bring some home, put it in the fridge, and hold on to it for lunch the next work day, or I'd share it with you. Wouldn't that be nice, hey? Imagine if someone had gone to a restaurant and they're like, this food is so good, I I wish you could taste it. Wait a minute, you can, I have some in my fridge. Here, taste this food, right? Give them a taste. That's a good way to convince someone to go to your favorite restaurant, right? So here's the thing. We can allow people to taste God, taste God for themselves. And it's actually very simple. It's just praying for them. Allow God to move in their lives. Invite God to move in their lives. You know, I have lots of jokes about leftovers, uh, but my wife told me not to share any. So I'm quitting cold turkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got to help people experience God for themselves. And we do that by praying for them. So the action step for this point is some point in the next week. When you're at work and you're hearing some, somebody gripe about a situation in their life and you're thinking, oh man, not this again, right? Actually, just, just pause and say, hey, um, I believe God is real and active and can I just pray for you a super simple prayer and ask to pray for them and then do it right then and there. Invite God not to be anonymous anymore, but to be real. Allow them to experience the taste of God being active in their lives. All right, so then the third point. Now, if you actually like me, this is what you'll do with your favorite restaurant. Um, you'll take me along. You'll take me along to your, anybody? Takers? No, okay. It's all right, I have plans today. 
Uh, take them along to your favorite restaurant. Take them along to the party right here, right now. In this room, like Sunday service. That's, that's what I'm talking about. If, if Sunday service seems a little bit uh, intense for some of the people you have in mind, maybe there's a midweek event that you could bring them to. Uh, a young adult's worship night, maybe um, a small group that meets in the building, uh, or somebody's home as well. For those of you online, what is a way that you could invite someone to participate? Maybe you could send an Evite to participate wherever they're at, or maybe have someone come with you wherever you are, in your living room, at your dining table, wherever. They can join with you online. So the thing is, we can take them along into this party, into this celebration. The number one reason people uh, come to church is because a friend invited them. Friends, inviting friends, is the number one way churches grow. How many of you have a friend that isn't currently attending a church? That's it? <laughs> Come on. I'm sure all of you have a friend not currently attending church. You can invite them in. That's the best way to get this church growing. It's the best way to get people in touch with God's grace and mercy. Now, I just want to close with this one story about a uh, time where multiple invitations went to one person and step by step they came to Christ. A number of months ago, the North End missions team uh, was knocking on doors in the North End to invite people to the barbecue we were having on Saturday evening. And so we knocked on one door. Actually, I don't remember this person at the time. I wasn't knocking on their door. One of the team members was. And so she received an invitation to come to a barbecue. She came to a barbecue. Free food is always good, right? <laughs> then she, uh, at the barbecue, she heard some testimonies of God working in people's lives. And she thought to herself, that is an interesting idea. I wonder if God would work in my life too. She heard an invitation to come to church the very next day, and guess what? It was four weeks before she came. But she did. But she did. That's, that's the point. That's the point. She came. Took four weeks, but she came to church. And as I was on stage delivering the salvation invitation, she put up her hand, and I went to go and talk to her afterwards, and she said, you know what? I am so excited that I am here. I need this so badly in my life. And I was like, well, how did you hear about this church? And she told me the whole story, the knock on her door, the barbecue, and, and whatever happened in those four weeks between, but she came to church all because of an invitation she received. That's my challenge to you. Who is your plus one to this party today and to the eternal party? Why don't you stand with me this morning? It's possible that maybe someone here today is in this place because of an invitation from a friend. Maybe you're, you hear me talking about God's grace and mercy and you have no idea what I'm talking about. The, the, the core of the Christian faith is that each and every one of us have turned our backs on God at some point. We've sinned. And it separates us from our Creator, our Heavenly Father, our God. And we need a way to get back in right relationship with him. And that is through Jesus Christ. I want to invite you all to close your eyes and bow your heads this morning. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as the savior of your soul, his death washes away our sins. And this opportunity for you right now is to receive God's grace and mercy through Jesus Christ. Even though none of us deserve it, the invitation is here for you, right here, right now. Don't miss this opportunity. So all eyes are closed and heads are bowed, but if this is your chance right now, if you are ready to, to receive God's grace and mercy, his salvation, just raise your hand right now. It's like you're reaching up to God saying, yes, I accept your salvation. I accept your grace and mercy. Thank you. We're all going to say a prayer together right away. You, don't, you won't be singled out at all. All right. 
Thank you. You can put your hands down. Let's all say this prayer together. Lord Jesus, I confess that I've been a sinner. I've been doing life my own way. But today that changes. I accept your grace and mercy. I accept the salvation of Jesus Christ. I accept that I am made new in the Holy Spirit. And I accept you as my Heavenly Father. Today I am a Christian. And I can celebrate with all my brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's celebrate. Yeah. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Amen.